What is up everybody, welcome back. So we have a couple of videos on this channel on the topic of ranking problems. There are this really interesting family of topics that are different from classification, different from regression problems, kind of a whole different thing on their own. Now, as part of that series, we made a video on one of the most popular metrics that are used in academia and the industry to judge whether or not you're doing a good job on your ranking problem, and that was NDCG. Now, that's still true. NDCG is, in my experience, the most popular metric used to judge ranking problems, but it's not dominant in the sense that it's used in 99% or even 90% of all applications. There are especially these two other very popular metrics that are used to judge ranking problems, which can each be more useful than NDCG depending on the use case. And so to really tell the whole story there, I want to go over the three most popular metrics used to judge ranking problems. MRR, MAP, and NDCG, and all those weird acronyms are going to make sense at the end of this video for you, and talk about when should you use each one? What is each one good for, and what is each one not so much good for? So to dive into this topic, let's use an example as we always do on this channel. We're going to go back to our good old Statflix example where you are running a streaming service for movies and TV shows about statistics. Very exciting. Now, as you might expect, you're ranking these shows for your customers. So for example, a customer might come and see a show ranked in the first position, second position, and third position. And then they can choose to do all sorts of different things with this ranked list. For example, they can click on the show on the second position if they find that kind of interesting and that takes them to this page where they can get more information on that show and then they can decide to watch that, for example, if they feel strongly enough. Now, in this application where you're serving these ranked list of shows for customers, how do we measure the success of this ranked list based on what the user does, based on whether they clicked, based on whether they watched? How do we know if this ranked list is good, if it's bad, if we have two ranked lists, which one's better than the other one? How are we going to figure that out? And that's where these metrics are going to come in. But before diving straight into the metrics, let's answer a more topical questions first. What do we actually care about in this application? Now, this is a bit of a loaded question because there's not an obvious answer here. One answer could be, I care about the position at which the user first clicks. All I care about is what's the first thing you click on. If that first thing you click on is in position one, I did my job regardless of whatever else happens in the list. If it's a position two, then that's worse. If it's a position three, that's even worse. That's one way to answer the question. Another way to answer the question would be, actually, I don't care about the first thing you click on. I care about the first thing you choose to watch. What is the position of the first thing you choose to watch? For example, if you click on the first and second, but then don't choose to watch them because they don't seem interesting, but you do click on the third and choose to watch the third, then I'm going to say that it's in the third position, the thing you chose to watch, and I'm going to judge the success or failure of the list just based on that. And then there's more nuanced answers to this question of what do we care about. We could say we generally want things that are clicked and or watched to be generally high in the list. For example, if there was something that was clicked but not watched in position one, something that was watched at position two, I'd say that's generally good. Could I have done even better? Yeah, if I was able to put the thing the person wanted to watch in position one, but that's generally good and I'm going to give points based on that. Now, this whole conversation we just had was not quantitative in any way, but it's still helpful because it gets across the point that in these ranking problems, there's not just like one thing we care about. And it helps to do this exercise first between yourself or whoever you're working with about what do we actually care about in this ranking problem? What actions or things do we want to be at high positions versus low positions? And once we've answered that, we can start talking about which metric is the right one to use. And that's exactly what we're going to get into now. We're going to go through three cases. In each case, we're going to talk about what is the thing we care about and how would we devise a metric that decides to care about that thing. And that's how we're going to get into this sheet here. So let's start here with case one. Case one, let's say that we decide that what we care about is just the first engagement, the position at which you first engage with anything in this rank list. And engagement is this broad term that captures both clicks and watches. It doesn't matter which one, we just care about what's the position of the first time you do that. If that's at a high position, we did our job. If that's at a low position, we did not do our job. And so what is the most obvious way to measure that? Well, the most obvious way to measure that would be using this thing called reciprocal rank, which is simply, simply just one divided by the position of the first thing that you engage with. 
And to make that concrete, let's go ahead and look at what that metric would be for the first case. So looking at the first case here, we see that the first video, the first video that we showed was clicked on, the second video didn't get a click or a watch, and the third one got a watch. Now, as we said, all we care about is the position of the first thing you engage with. And so the position of the first thing I engage with is the first thing. And so we'd say that's a resounding success for us. And we're going to measure that by looking at one divided by the position of the first thing that I engage with, or the reciprocal rank of the first thing that I engage with. And that's going to be one divided by one. So our reciprocal rank is simply going to be one in this first case. In fact, it's going to be one in both these other cases as well, because we're literally given we clicked on the first thing, we don't even care what's happening in the rest of that list. And we'll see that that can be a downside of this metric. But in this case, because we clicked on the first thing in each of these three different ranked lists, and if it wasn't obvious here, this is one rank list, this is another rank list, this is another rank list, so that's how you read this table. In each of those rank lists, we are engaging with the thing in the first position, making the reciprocal rank of the first thing that we engage with to be one in all cases. And the reason it's called mean reciprocal rank is because in any real application, you're gonna be taking the average of these reciprocal ranks over all sorts of videos. So we would take the average of these three ones and we would get one in this case, nothing exciting. But you take the reciprocal rank and that's one value for every ranked list and then you take the average of that across all the different lists that you serve to all of the different users on this Statflix platform. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this. The pros is that it is dead simple, super easy to understand, the most interpretable of the metrics we're gonna look at today. The con is that it doesn't care about what else is going on in your list. For example, let's take a look at this first one versus the third one. The third one seems objectively better because they both have a click in the first position, but then the third rank list here has a watch in the second position, and the first one has a watch in the third position. So just objectively, you're getting the person to watch something that is in a higher position, but this metric does not care about that. All it cares about is what is the position of the first thing that I engaged with, and because that's the same for all of them, they get the exact same score. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing, because in this case, that is exactly what we cared about, and so that would be the measure of success. But if we think again and say, actually, we care a little bit about what's happening in the rest of the list, then reciprocal rank or mean reciprocal rank would not be the right metric to use here. So this is the right metric to use when you purely just care about the first time in the list that somebody takes an action. And that's what we're measuring here. And now trying to address that con and actually taking into account the rest of the list, we're gonna to get to our case two. Let's say in case two, we care instead about the precision at each point that the user chose to engage with. So this is already a little bit more to unpack than case one, but let's go ahead and try to unpack it by formulating what this would look like for the second of the rank list on the previous table. So that second list is reproduced below. It was a click, followed by nothing, followed by a click on the third position. Now, the way that this average precision metric is going to work is it's going to say at each point the user engaged, in this case, there's two points the user engaged, one time at the first item and one time at the third video here. At each time that the user engaged, we're gonna compute the precision. So let's do that step by step. The first time that the user engaged, there was just one item so far, so we're gonna ignore everything that came after that engagement. What is the precision up until there? And the precision, which is a term you might recognize from other machine learning contexts, is simply going to be the number of successful cases divided by the total number of cases we have. Now, the total number of cases we have is just one so far. The number of successful cases, i.e. those that got engagement, whether that's a click or a watch, is also one. So our precision at this point is gonna be one divided by one, which is one. Now extending that story, we're gonna to go to the next time that the user engaged with something, and that's, oh, right here. And we're gonna do the same exact exercise. How many things were there total up until then? Well, there's three, so that becomes our denominator. How many successful engagements were there? There was two, a click here and a click here, so we're gonna get two divided by three. So our precision at the first engagement was one, and our precision at the second engagement was two divided by three, making our average precision for this entire list to be the average of one and two divided by three, which gives us five divided by six. Now hopefully you see mathematically how it works, but beyond that, let's talk about what it is this is actually trying to get at, because it was definitely confusing for me at first. What this is trying to get at is saying at each time the user engages, 
what is the overall average quality of the things they had to look through in order to get to that engagement? So for example, that's a good story for this first item because it says I only had to look through one thing and that one thing was good and so one over one being 100% reflects that. By the time we get to this third item, the story is less good because it says that I had to look through three things and only two of them were good, which means I kind of wasted my time on that middle item. And that waste of time is reflected in the fact that two thirds is not as good as one divided by one. And so this average precision thing is taking into account the wasted time or the poor experience that the user had at each point along the way when they decided to click or whether they decided to watch anything. And in that way, it does care about the rest of the list. It's a bit more of a holistic look at how good the user experience or the quality of the ranked list was for the entire list, not just at the first time that the user chose to watch or uh, click on something. So that's the average precision. And in a very similar way, that is calculated for one ranked list. If we want the mean average precision or MAP, sometimes just called MAP, we're gonna take the average of the average precisions. That's a bit of a confusing thing, but it's basically just saying take the average precision for each rank list across your entire data set, and then take the average of all those average precisions, and that gives you MAP. And so let's go ahead and fill in our MAPs here. And so we already did it for this middle case on our previous page, and that was five over six, which is around 0.83. So that's gonna be 0.83. And that actually gives us the exact answer for this first case too, because this, like the previous metric MRR, also doesn't distinguish between clicks and watches. And so for all intents and purposes, this watch is gonna get treated as the same thing as this click, which means that these two lists are identical from the views of MAP, which is gonna be a downside we're gonna see in a second, but that means that the MAP is also 0.83 here. And what's the MAP for this last one? Well, if we look at it for a second, it's going to be perfect because by the time I get to this first engagement, my precision is one divided by one. When I get to the second engagement, there's no wasted time. There's no X's in this list. So it's also gonna be 100%, making the average 100%. So let's dwell on this for just a second and talk about what it is that this metric captures that the previous one didn't. Well, just looking at the numbers, we see that this metric is telling us that the third rank list is definitely better than the first two. And we might agree with that just by looking at it. It's a very similar story to what we told before. In the third one, we get a click and a watch immediately after. In both of the other ones, we get a click and then nothing. And so it does sure seem like the third one should be better. And the fact that it's getting a perfect MAP does sort of reflect that. And it does that again by caring about the entire list, which MRR does not. Now, let's get back to that downside of MAP. And for that matter, it's a downside of MRR as well which is that for MRR and MAP, they only cared about binary grades. It didn't distinguish whether you're looking at a click or whether you're looking at a watch. But as the data scientist for Statflix, you might actually put more weight on a watch than a click. Because at the end of the day, a click means, hey, I'm kind of interested in this TV show. Let's read the description. Let's watch the trailer. Let's see what it's all about. But a watch says that I'm going to commit some portion of my life to actually try watching this show. And that might go a much longer way especially towards the business use case than just a simple click. And so neither of these metrics can take that to account because to use either of these, we have to first binarize the relevance, basically say that this means that it's not relevant to the user and this means that it is relevant to the user. There's not really room here to say that there's different grades like a zero, a one, a two. And that's where our good friend NDCG comes in. Now I won't go too deep into NDCG because we have a whole video on NDCG which is gonna be linked below, but the main pro of NDCG versus these previous two cases is that it allows us to deal with use cases where we care about these grades, where we might assign a watch a grade of a two. We might say a click has a grade of a one and neither of them would have a grade of a zero. It allows us to give these rankings in terms of the labels that we have from our users. And so we can go through what is the NDCG calculation for the third of the rank list from the table in the previous page, so which was a click, a view, and nothing. Uh, as we know with NDCG, we first rank it in the optimal order. So that would be a view, a click, and then nothing. We calculate the discounted cumulative gain. We calculate the ideal discounted cumulative gain. Again, all the details of that, if you're curious, will be linked in the video below. And then we get that the NDCG, or the normalized discounted cumulative gain, is gonna be the DCG divided by the ideal DCG, which is gonna give us 0.8 for that third one. So we can go ahead and fill that right in. 
we know that the NDCG for this third use case is 0 0.8, and it's not easy for us to calculate them like it was for the previous ones on the fly, so I'm going to fill them in for us here. The NDCG of this first one is 0 0.69, and then the NDCG of the third one is 0 0.92. So let's talk about pros and cons of NDCG. The pro is that, you know, we were just talking about it. It's able to deal with these grades, whereas the previous ones were not. One of the cons is complexity. The whole calculation we're doing here sure looks a lot more complex and less interpretable. It's a lot harder to explain what's going on and interpret what's going on versus MRR or MAP. So complexity, both in terms of understanding, but also just computational complexity, how long it takes to compute this is going to be higher for NDCG. And there's actually one more nuanced con that I wanted to call out here, which I think is important and doesn't get talked about a whole lot with NDCG. And to see that, look at the first two rank lists. Before looking at any of these numbers, in fact, I'll cover them for just a second. If you look at just these first two rank lists, which of them would you say is better? Well, they're actually the same for the first two positions, so we can't really say anything based on that. For the third position, the first rank list got a view, which is nice. The second rank list here just got a click. So naively, I would just say, you know what? The first one is better. We got a click, we got nothing, but that's the same for the second one. But at least we got a view. We got a whole view in the third position, whereas the second rank list in the third position just got a click. So the first one is going to be better. What does NDCG say? Whoa, why is NDCG giving such a high value, a 0.92 to the second one, and giving the absolute lowest value of the three here to the third one? There's something really weird going on. And the reason for that is NDCG, if I were to explain it in one sentence, says relative to the best way you could have ordered this list, what is the performance of the way the list was actually ordered? And now let's look at each of those in a vacuum and try to see why this weird reversal might be happening. This first one, the absolute best way we could have ordered the list would be putting this view first, then the click, than nothing. Now because the view was actually in the third position here, we're doing a lot worse. We're doing a lot worse, especially given that we've given a whole label of two to this view. We've given a lot of weight to this view because we care about these watches more than we care about clicks. And so by putting in the third position, by having it in the third position versus ideally having it in the first position, the deviation between where this list is at and where this list ideally would like to be is very high. And because NDCG is exactly measuring that deviation, it gives a very low value here. It's saying that this is very deviated from where this list would like to be because we're putting this very high value target in the lowest place, whereas we would love this very high value target in the highest place. Now compare that with this list here. What's the ideal ordering of this list? The ideal ordering of this list would be click, click, nothing. Because just looking at what's contained in here, there are no watches, there are no views in here, there's only clicks. And so we'll only have to go off of what we're seeing here based on NDCG, so the ideal ordering would just be pretty much moving this click one position up. All that is to say that the deviation or the distance between where this list ideally would like to be and where this list is at is not that high. It's almost where it needs to be, especially because the weight of each of these clicks is only one, and so we're not losing a lot. We're not sacrificing a lot by having this click in the third position versus having it in the second position, meaning that the NDCG here ends up higher. When we tell the stories independently, it makes total sense why the NDCG of the first one would be lower than the NDCG of the second one, but when we compare these head to head, you know, it doesn't really make sense. I would love for whatever metric I'm using to be higher for this first one than for the second one, and that's not the case here. And I tell that story because these aren't the only three metrics you can use. In fact, there's different extensions, variations, flavors of each of these metrics that try to address those weird corner cases that we run into, this being one of them. And so I would encourage you to come up with how do we actually adjust these metrics to get something that has a higher value for this one than this one. So what I wanted to get across in this video is that these are the three most popular metrics that are used in ranking problems. And I wanted to, in a sentence, recap what is the use case for each one. For MRR, you would use it when you have binary labels and all you care about is the position of the first success. So you'd probably use this in some kind of application where there's only one right answer to the question that somebody is searching for 
And what you care about is having that right answer being as high in the list as possible. That is an excellent use case for MRR. Now you would use MAP when you care more about the holistic goodness of the list, where there may not just be one right answer, there may be a couple different right answers, there may be a couple different things that the user wants to engage with. And you want to overall measure the success, again, of these binary successes and failures that are in the list, and that's a good use case to use MAP here. Now NDCG is great to use, and in fact necessary to use, when you care about these graded relevance labels, when you care about the fact that a watch should have more weight than a click. And you might have even more grades, you might have something that happens after that, like somebody gives a thumbs up could be another grade. Somebody gives a thumbs up to the video, for example. So NDCG is great when you have these graded labels. So again, I'd say that NDCG is the dominant one used in the industry, but MRR and MAP I've used plenty of times and definitely have their place, and it's not something where you should gravitate to NDCG blindly. You should first think about this question, the biggest question. What the heck do we care about in this ranking problem? Go from there, talk about that with your collaborators, and based on the answer to that question, come up with the metric that makes sense for you. So hopefully this video was informative for you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are always welcome in the section below, and I'll see all you wonderful, wonderful people next time.